Now call one two seven three three seven. Matter of Darren Fulcher responded. Madam Chief Justice, and may it please the court, Kate Duncan Butler appears on behalf of the Office of the Disciplinary Administrator. I would respectfully request three minutes for rebuttal. Three minutes is granted. Thank you. This is an original proceeding in attorney discipline involving the respondent, Darren Fulcher, who has been licensed to practice law in the state of Kansas since 1999. This matter comes before the court after an evidentiary hearing held on January 18th, 2024, that included a joint stipulation by the parties. In that stipulation, the parties agreed to the facts underlying this case, as well as violations of KRPC 1.8 subsection E, providing financial assistance to a client, 1.15 subsection A, safeguarding client property, and 1.15 subsection B, promptly delivering funds to clients and third parties. In the final hearing report issued on February 7th of 2024, the hearing panel made findings of facts and conclusions of law, including that Mr. Fulcher violated the rules I just outlined. No exceptions were filed by the parties, meaning that the issue today before the court is the appropriate discipline. Today, the disciplinary administrator is recommending differently than they did at the hearing panel. It is our recommendation that Mr. Fulcher be suspended from the practice of law for a period of two years, but that that suspension be stayed for a period of two years probation. To get to why the recommendation has changed, I will summarize the facts and then talk about what has happened subsequent to the hearing. To highly summarize the facts, Mr. Fulcher's practice is primarily personal injury and some criminal defense. Many of the personal injury cases are on a contingency basis uh, in the Kansas City area. In June of 2021, the Missouri Office for the Chief Disciplinary Council, which I will refer to as OCDC going forward, reported that an information, which is like a formal complaint in Kansas, had been filed against Mr. Fulcher regarding his trust accounting practices. Um, OCDC had audited and investigated Mr. Fulcher's trust accounting from December 2017 to September 2020 and found that he had insufficient and inadequate trust accounting practices that led to clients and third parties not being promptly and completely paid. The pattern that essentially emerged to summarize um, the many instances is that Mr. Fulcher would receive settlement funds, deposit them in his trust account, prepare a settlement statement for the client indicating what money went where, who, what does the client get, what does Mr. Fulcher get, what's expenses, what goes to third parties, but then those payments didn't always get made promptly or fully, including sometimes Mr. Fulcher not paying himself immediately. Um, the end result was that there were around 20 clients who were impacted by this. Notably, during the audit process with OCDC, as the investigator found places where payments hadn't been made, Mr. Fulcher immediately made each of those clients whole. So at this time, those that all has been corrected, in fact, was corrected long before the hearing in this case. When you in, say clients, does that also include third-party lien holders? Yes, I apologize, Justice. Well, anyone who was owed money, had it had been resolved. Um, the investigation also discovered that Mr. Fulcher had made large round number withdrawals from the trust account, not based on the exact attorney fees earned in owing, um, and that there were times where his account balance in the trust account was less than what was outstanding to be paid out. Mr. Fulcher has acknowledged he was not reconciling the accounts and essentially trying to keep all the numbers in his head. Um, after a process with the OCDC and a formal hearing in Missouri, the ultimate result was that the Missouri Supreme Court suspended Mr. Fulcher's law license on November 22nd, 2022. Um, and said he would be eligible for reinstatement after a period of two years. So in November of this year, he will be eligible to read for reinstatement. 
the Kansas Office of the Disciplinary Administrator filed a formal complaint in reciprocal discipline involving the Missouri Trust account in November of 2023. Mr. Fulcher answered on December 12th of 2023. And as I previously mentioned before the formal hearing, the parties entered a joint stipulation, leaving the hearing panel to consider the appropriate standards, aggravating circumstances, mitigating circumstances, and discipline. At the time of the hearing, the disciplinary administrator recommended a two-year suspension from the practice of law retroactive to when the Missouri suspension started. Mr. Fulcher had, amongst the, um, the outcome he requested, asked for probation, but it was the disciplinary administrator's position at that time that his proposed probation plan did not comport with Rule 227 because it was not substantial, detailed, workable, um, did not adequately protect the public or have sufficient safeguards to address the misconduct. Um, the hearing panel ultimately approved of the probation plan and recommended a one-year suspension, stayed for two years of probation. But the hearing panel did recommend some additions to the hearing, uh, excuse me, to the probation plan to make it more robust. Subsequent to the hearing and before this case was docketed before the Supreme Court, Mr. Fulcher and the Disciplinary Administrator's Office came together to revise and amend the probation plan to address the concerns that the Disciplinary Administrator had had and to incorporate the additions suggested by the hearing panel, especially when it came to um, trust account specific and audit specific provisions. It is now the position of the Disciplinary Administrator that this amended plan does comport with Rule 227, does protect the public, include the adequate safeguards, meet all of those requirements. Mr. Fulcher put that plan into pr practice on March 6th of this year, and in the joint statement of no exceptions filed before this court on March 21st, we included the amended probation plan with that. Um, effective, so the two years probation would be effective beginning when? Filing of the order or going back to March? Um, uh, the two... Uh, it is this court's determination of how they want to do it. I believe our um, request would be that all the time periods begin, the probation would begin at the time of this order. That's usually standard. Um, at the time of the filing of the order. Is yes, of your order. That's your yes. position. Okay, yes. thank you. Um, so that is now the, but the disciplinary administrator's uh, position at this time is that Mr. Fulcher be placed on probation to um, work through um the, the trust accounting sort of practices and procedures and improvements that are spoken to in the probation plan, as well as to attend to the legal education included in all of that. Um, to briefly touch on the aggravating and mitigating fact, well, the standard found by the um, hearing panel and the aggravating and mitigating factors, um, the hearing panel discussed two ABA standards, um, standard 4.12 states that suspension is appropriate when a lawyer knows or should know that he is dealing in improperly with client property and causes injury or potential injury. And standard 1.13, also referenced by the hearing panel, states that reprimand is appropriate when a lawyer is negligent in dealing with client property and causes injury or potential injury. But as I will note in a moment, um, Mr. Fulcher had twice um, been disciplined in Missouri by OCDC for um, essentially failures to comply with trust accounting practices. Also, we expect attorneys know their duties under the rules of professional responsibility. And so his deficient trust accounting practices um, is that he knew or should have known that he was not dealing properly. Um, apart from the prior discipline, um, the aggravating, the other aggravating factor in this case was that Mr. Fulcher has substantial experience in the practice of law and has been practicing since 1999. Um, but the mitigating factors um, found and discussed by the panel are he had an absence of dishonest or selfish motive. The um, evidence was not that he was purposely taking money or attempting to convert client funds. It was simply deficient accounting practices. He has shown genuine remorse. He understands he violated the rules and the negative impact that has had on clients and third parties. Um, he has uh, had other penalties imposed in the form of his um, attorney discipline in Missouri. And he has uh, previous good character. He is an active and productive member of the bar. I believe there are several character letters in the record. He is a trusted member of the community. There was discussion um, at the hearing about his involvement in the greater community in Kansas. Um, so unless this court has any questions, it would be our recommend 
interpretation request today that Mr. Fulcher be suspended from the practice of law for that two year period, but then have that stayed so he can be on probation for two years. Is that retroactive or starting when the opinion is published? For which part, the probation? The suspension. Um, our request would be that it start when the opinion is uh, okay. filed and published as well. And, so and the oh. No, just we're, we're, he's still suspended in Missouri until? He will be, my understanding is he is eligible for reinstatement um, in November of 2024. Okay. But okay. like Kansas, the reinstatement process um, can take a little while. Thank you. Uh, that was really, I was going to say, so the practical effect of this is that for the next couple years, he'll be able to practice in Kansas, but he'll still be prohibited from practicing in Missouri. I would, I don't know Missouri's process very well, maybe less than a couple of years, but uh, yes, if the practical effect is if this court is to, if this court follows the request and imposes the discipline we have recommended, uh, he is still able to practice in Kansas while he is not in Missouri. Do you know what the if there's any practical difference between the Missouri order that was indefinite, but stating he cannot apply for uh, reinstatement versus for two years versus a two year uh, sanction and a seven hearing? Justice Wilson, I'm not an expert in Missouri's processes. What? I recall being told is that that's how Missouri writes its orders, um, but I could be misspeaking. I'm not, I don't know that. So may no, maybe no practical difference. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chief Justice and Justice, may it please the court. My name is Todd Mulder, as indicated earlier, I represent Mr. Fulcher, and, and maybe to address a little bit of some of those questions, Mr. Fulcher uh, is eligible for reinstatement in December, or excuse me, November or December of this year. Apply for reinstatement, the Supreme Court will take that application, the information we provide. No. Not eligible to reapply until completion of the pension. Not eligible to re right and, and to reapply yeah, until the two years go. All right. Uh, so we're looking at least November twenty four in Missouri, but here the recommendation is is upon filing of this pension we would impose would be suspended. Correct, and then he'd be put on probation in Kansas. Correct. And continue okay. to yeah. be able to practice law in Kansas. Now, when exactly Missouri will reinstate him is. Varies a lot, from my understanding. Jim Moore in my office does a lot of that in Missouri, and even he says, "Who knows?" Well, yeah. Does the reinstatement application go to a panel to make a report, or does it go straight to the court? It goes to the Missouri Supreme Court. I do not think it goes to the panel for like a rehearing on. But let me ask you this, um, and maybe this is something that that uh, Mr. Fulcher would need to answer, but. Uh, before all this happened, what percentage of Mr. Fulcher's uh, caseload was in Kansas? Um, before all this happened, uh, he had mainly a criminal practice in Kansas. Not, not a lot of civil. Uh, civil in Kansas. He continues to maintain a criminal practice in Kansas. Has always, um, and but his civil has increased. I don't know, Mr. Mr. Fulcher. Okay. In a minute. Yeah. I don't know his exact caseload, um, but I think he'll be able to probably better than I can. Um, we don't have any disagreements with what was said by counsel. Um, I might just like to uh, talk about the fact that this audit in Missouri did start in, in the of COVID, March actually, when everything was falling apart in 2020. Uh, and then what the OCDC in Missouri did was they subpoenaed they had one complaint by one of his clients. I think she wanted to, didn't want to pay the lien holders. We wanted all the lien money paid to, made to her. Mr. Fulcher said, no, I can't do that. So then she filed a complaint with the Missouri OCDC. Ironically, her claim is not even part of what, what happened in Missouri. Um, but as a result of that, they subpoenaed all of his bank records back to December of 2017 through September of 2020. Um, did a audit 
found lots of, I say lots, it's several instances of, uh, of issues with his accounting, uh, with his trust account. And frankly, to be honest, and he's, he has said this and will say it again, he frankly wasn't reconciling the account, uh, wasn't really doing any accounting of his trust account, and he knows that was wrong and improper and what, and frankly, what led to all these issues. Because just a little sampling of, of what some of those issues were, uh, he, he would meet with his clients, he would have them sign the settlement sheet, uh, and now on there, there would be issues about lien holders, third party holders, you know, folks that that were owed money. And on one in particular, um, uh, held out the lien money. As, and as it turns out, his, that person's health insurer ended up paying that money. But he never got the check to the client, even though the health insurance company had actually paid the paid the lien. And it's because he's not reconciling his account. He's not going through and, and, and following up and making sure that those things are being done in a timely fashion. So there's several of those types of of lien issues where a lien gets negotiated down to a lesser amount and the difference isn't paid to the client. Um, there was one case where he, his client was owed 3,400 roughly. They got paid 3,000. He didn't keep good records uh, at the time and he wasn't sure if he, that 400 was paid in cash or he also represented him on a criminal case. Wasn't sure if that was paid on some tickets. Called the client, he didn't know either. So he ended up just paying that 400 because, because the OCDC in Missouri said, well, where's money? You gotta pay that money. And he, and he did. He did advance money to a client on a settlement that hadn't quite been done of $500 out of his own account, which is one of the violations we stipulated to. Uh, I think she was living in her car and had a financial crisis. Doesn't excuse it, but that was that was why he did it. Um, uh, I'm having a hard time <clears throat> pulling up my documentation for some reason on the 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 newest uh, kind of beefed up pro, uh, probation plan. And can you, and maybe you're going to get to it, so I apologize if I jumping ahead of what what is in place to correct the reconciliation issues uh in, in terms of maybe education and maybe ongoing um audit or or i'll let you just touch on that but that's no that, that's that, thank the you pdf documents are freezing on me right no, now. that's okay and, and i and i think it is in there but um our original probation plan which the panel found sufficient, uh, and then we, of course, negotiated a more robust one, um, didn't have um, allowed for audits at, you know, the behest of, of the Office of Disciplinary Counsel, um, but now it's required. And in fact, um, so it's additional auditing. Um, uh, Mr. Um, Fulcher has a accounting firm hired, uh, brain, I think, uh, accounting firm is reconciling every month but it's, I think it's primarily additional auditing uh, at the expense of Mr. Fulcher. And I believe just within the last two or three weeks, an audit did occur. And I think a report was sent to the disciplinary counsel's office and it, and she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I, it came back fine as far as everything was reconciled, the auditing, and, and, and that person went through and took those settlement sheets and went through the checks written and, and made sure the liens were going out and being paid and everything came back fine. I do believe that person, I do have some notes on it, here a little bit down the road, but um, made some additional recommendations. Uh, one was to keep even a third ledger. So he's got his ledger for his trust account, his ledger for his just operating account. And then, and he may be able to explain it better because I think he spoke to the, the auditor, but a third ledger that kind of keeps some kind of running tally that I'm not quite sure I understand. Um, he also recommended monthly reconciliations, which are a little confusion, which is being done. I think he saw the quarterly one and thought it was just quarterly being done, but monthly is being done. So it's just it's just a more robust, I think, overseen uh, on a more frequent basis than what our plan provided for. Um, the last one I see that was filed was January 4 of 2024. Is that the last one? The last one, I'm sorry. Uh, probation plan, terms and conditions of probation filed with the Board of Discipline. So right, I that was our plan. And then, and then okay. in March 21st, of this of 2024, the notice pursuant to Kansas Supreme Court Rule 228 of no exceptions was filed, and attached to that was the amended probation plan, terms and conditions of probation. Um, so that's where you find that, and it may be you're not seeing it maybe because it's attached to the notice, uh, but it was filed March 21st, 2024. Um. So there's a number, you know, there was another occasion where deposits were made into his trust account, and he was asked by the auditor, well, what was that for? 
and he wasn't sure. <laughs> he thought he was co-counsel, but it's just it's all evidence of very poor record keeping. If if and almost you know almost not any record keeping to some degree on that regard. Counsel, um, I want to make sure I wrote down accurately. I understood you to say that the respondent now has an accounting firm that that trust account on a period. Yes, and does it on a reconciles his trust account on a monthly basis. Yes, that is correct. Um, I got confused about that between that and what the disciplinary. Right. And yeah. then does he have a supervising attorney as well? Yes. Uh, okay. And his name is Rich McLeod. Oh, he's, he's okay. Bernie there. I mean, your reaction tells me you know who Rich is. I know Rich, yeah. Rich is, you know, a longtime litigator, I think has enjoys a very good reputation in Kansas City, uh, does a lot of mediations and filed uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, and, and, and Mr. Um, Cloud is going to report to the disciplinary office about his contacts with Mr. Poulter. Uh, on a on a monthly basis. So I think that is, I think Mr. McLeod, frankly, had a little confusion. He wasn't sure if he had to file those reports until this court gave its order. I think in reality, if you read the plan, he probably should have. I'm not sure he has filed any reports yet with the um, Office of, of Discipline, but um, uh, Act has inquired about that. So, um, but throughout the Missouri and the Kansas proceedings, Mr. Mr. Poulter has admitted and agreed that, that he did a terrible job of keeping record and managing his trust account didn't appropriately reconcile his trust account, uh, and those all rep resulted in multiple violations of, of uh, providing financial assistance, um, mixing his funds. Because he, he, you know, there's been no allegation of dishonesty or that he was trying to you know, line his own pockets, those kinds of things. There's not an allegation of that in this case. Um, so when they talk about mixed funds or not protecting the client's money, what that's getting into, as I understand it, is. You know, when you leave your funds you've earned in there and say there's a lien against you as an attorney, then that then opens that up to some kind of seizure by a lien holder uh, against you. Um, but there were a number of mitigating factors. Uh, we touched on those. Cooperation, um, evidence of a lot of letters from the community about Mr. Holters and his involvement in the community uh, and his volunteer work um, and would ask that the, and I'm going to sit down here, I've got about four or five minutes left, but we would ask that this court um, find that the new probation, amended probation plan is robust. I mean, I think the goal in these kinds of things is correct the problem. You know, what was the problem? Is it Mr. Crack of his, of his account like he should have? Um, hired the accountant uh, in fall of 2020 that now reconciles his account. He's been audited since that time. Uh, no problems have been found. There's been no new issues. So that's been three and a half years of that kind of supervision already with Mr. Fulcher. And so if your goal is to is to discipline, make sure those issues are corrected, I think that this plan is robust. It is working. There's evidence now that, that it is working. Um, so we would request that you uh, for that uh, recommendation that has been um, discussed um, that Mr. Um, Ultra be put on probation and that plan proposed by the parties be put in place. Let me clarify, you agree with the two-year suspension at the filing of this and with the two-year probation and stayed with the two-year probation plan? You're yes. Okay, yes. thank you. I uh, see I have about three minutes left, so I want to give Mr. Uh, an opportunity to address the court. Um, but if you have any questions before I go, be happy to address those. Thank you, Mr. Fulton. Please, the court. Um, I'm embarrassed that I put myself in this situation. I have to be here. that at one point practicing primarily in um, criminal law, mostly federal criminal practice, I was on the CJA panel eight. I know Judge Finner asked me to join the, the CJA panel during federal cases over to me and asked primarily what I was doing. Um, 
could have um, find a representative for motor company. So when I got client funds, then that time, um, third party payout, I wasn't paying clients out. And so it was just, I moved over when I had earned fees. I didn't even, didn't, I, I wasn't even on fee reconciliations. And, um, and then at some point, I went on my own and I started practicing in 2012. A little practitioner, my personal injury practice just, um, and it's no excuse. Um, single dad. I had gone through divorce. So I was raising these two young girls and our two girls, and it was just working. Stopped. <clears throat> um, and so. never stopped. And I thought, I have all this in my head. I got it taken care of. Um, there were times when I double paid clients and I just, I, I, but I never wanted to hurt anybody. That was, the, I, I, that's just, and it broke me up. And came that I, I began to audit, I, I just was broke. Never wanted to hurt anybody. From March 13th, 2020, audited on a regular basis by Missouri. Uh, I hired a, uh, 2020 hired um, accounting firm takeover doing the monthly reconciliations and report that they sent to Kansas Bar recently. He did the monthly reconciliation. He also did does a quarterly reconciliation. Well, one recommendation that they uh, gave to me is to make sure I send over my client letters to them as well, so we can have some backup. Uh, I my account is balanced. To the, so I just. Go my mercy on the court, I, and I apologize. Family, uh, the young men that I mentor, church family, I, I just don't. May please the court and briefly the um, just because I know some folks were having trouble pulling up the amended probation plan um, to clarify that was filed with this court, not with the board of discipline because it was part of the statement of joint exceptions. So it's not in the record that came from below, for lack of a better word. Um, the major differences there is in addition, Mr. Fulcher already had the account accounting firm involved during the hearing. There was testimony from the accountant. That accounting firm is do is and was doing a sort of ordinary reconciliation um, of just what goes in, what comes out, um, and so the amended probation plan includes making sure that Mr. Fulcher's practice supervisor gets access to all of these records, including the settlement statements and client by client breakdowns, to do sort of an additional layer of. Um, reconciliation and recognition of what money in the trust account belongs to what client at what time, um, as well as the audit by um, our office, our auditor went and audited Mr. Fulcher's um, account and as was discussed, uh, found that overall it was fine, a few recommendations for improved practices, but nothing, no red flags, no um, nothing that jumped out as a problem. Um, and then I do think the amended probation plan had a few like added 
a little bit more education and a requirement that he read the trust accounting handbook put out by our office. But those are the major, those are sort of the added layers to what was in the original probation plan. Um, so other than that, I don't have any other material for this court unless there are any questions. Much a question, but perhaps a matter of um, file completeness that we may, I may want to address while you're both here. Um, I had made a note that the app, we do have the affidavit of compliance with the probation plan, and it did refer to the amended plan, and that was filed with this court on April 26th. So I was going to ask, we've got the affidavit refers to amended plan, but I was unable to find the amended plan. And I think that and I'm not finding it. And my colleagues are in the same situation that in the materials before us that we have the notice of stipulation. And that, as you all know, or may know, we are the, the um, last <laughs> to uh, get a return of an electronic case management system. So this is maybe just one of those things that it it's because of the of um, that problem and it is downstairs um, or even in one of our offices and we just haven't all been made aware of it. But there's a chance that we are missing that document. So you both do agree that that was filed and that there, you know, that there's no question that that was properly filed with the court. Yes, Justice Lugert, and my... Yeah. Oh. I have a file stamp copy of... We, I don't know. I don't want to take your only copy or anything, but it might be that Mr. Shima can. Uh, we might get a copy before you leave the building, if you don't mind. If you both agree, just we probably have it, but not, this is we're still back where the district courts were at the very early with our cybersecurity attack. We're we're still saying we all know we're here, but could you help us with the paperwork that gets us here? So we still have a little bit of that going on on occasion. Yes, I think we both agree, and my copy is file stamped as well, um, but it's annotated, so I can't offer it to the court, um, but that it was filed as part of the notice, the joint notice of no exceptions, and so if there was some confusion, we'll make sure the court gets a copy. Okay, thank you. Anything else by anyone? Thank you very much. Is that uh... We thank both counsel and, and respondent for statements and arguments today. That does complete our docket and the court is now adjourned.